the second half of chat number 299, and it was called, um, it was called Stop Believing the Lies, um, and hello, Sylvia. Sylvia's grandchildren were in a play at church, so she is just a few minutes late, but Sylvia, we had such a good first half of the chat that it is mandatory that you go back and watch it. And you also have to vote on Christmas, uh, let's see, if we're playing a game next week and about Christmas night and New Year's night. So Sylvia, you've already got homework before you even got here. Okay, so this is the second half of chat number 299. And hello, Anita. Anita, you've already got homework to do too. So, sorry, you have to go back and watch the first half of this chat later, okay? And then you have to vote on chat 300 if we're doing a game and about Christmas and about New Year's. Okay, so this is the second half. Again, this is the second half of chat number 299. This is, let's see, today is December the 11th. Um, and we, I'm revisiting some zero point foods. So last week we talked about um, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, or I keep saying specifically non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Last week we talked about plain yogurt, non-fat plain yogurt, and we talked about fat-free cottage cheese and that those are zero points for everybody now. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about beans. So beans, legumes, um, peas, things like that to get started. So to get started with the second half, we are gonna to have to get something into the air fryer and it will make sense when we get to the end of the chat. But even though we're talking about specifically about beans in the second half tonight, I have um, boneless, skinless chicken thighs in here in in the pan for my air fryer i'm gonna add i spritzed them with a little bit of olive oil i'm gonna add some nutritional yeast and if you don't know what nutritional yeast is then you ain't been around very long and there is a chat for that and you need to go back and watch it and then i'm gonna add some dax red mountain rub because that's what i'm feeling like tonight just gonna liberally spritz that on there and then this is going to be that man's chicken. It is not fat man's chicken, not F-A-T, it's T-H-A-T, that man's chicken. We'll talk more about this here in, just a, in a few minutes, but we got to get it in the air fryer so it'll be done when we get to the end of the chat. Um, it, this is going to go in for um, um, 360 for 18 minutes, so it's got to get going. In the air fryer, this is a Simple Living Products air fryer, and I don't know if you can see it, but I scooped instead of shoving you push the center button, and we are going to put it in there for 360. It already comes up to 360, so I don't have to touch the temperature button. We're going to touch the time and put it on 18 and push again for start. So, if you all would pretty please, if somebody would let me know when it has been nine minutes, then we need to um, flip those, okay? And Debbie said, I think we should have a recipe swap for Christmas all online on the private group and post to the file section. Debbie, guess what? You just volunteered to host that. So Debbie is now our involuntary host. I don't know if she meant to do that or not, but she is now our involuntary host for a recipe swap over on the If You Have an Egg group. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we've got some that man's chicken going, even though I want to talk to you about beans, okay? So beans are zero now. Um, beans, legumes, lentils, peas, you know, anything in that family. So I kept rotating them into my zero point food list um, when we were on personal points. So how many of you, either for the entire time that we were on personal points or um, you, let's see. Okay, so Deborah wants to know how to get into the, if you have an egg group. And so I'm sure that Debbie or Carol will be happy to send you that link. When you go to apply, you have to answer the three questions. Even if you just put, watched you on, you know, watched you on the chat, watched you on the chat, watched you on the chat. You have to answer the three questions though, so I know that you're a real person, okay? And thank you, Carol, for posting that again. So how many of you either had beans, peas, things like that on your zero points food list during um, personal points or cycled them in, you know, a few times? So Vicki says, love, love, love beans, filling and have fiber. Um, oh, bye, Linda. See you later. See you next week. Um, oh, and Sandra says, just like the army. Yep. So, okay. So don't get me wrong. I was happy to swap in, you know, from time to time, I was happy to swap in potatoes, pasta, oats, you know, when it suited my fancy. Um, but beans, peas, legumes, things like that, you know, they stick with me when I eat them. Do you know what I mean? Does anybody agree? So somebody a second ago said, 
Um, let's see, who was it? Uh, Bicky said that B loves beans because they're filling and you know and provide fiber. So they, I don't know, I, I kept cycling the other things in and out, you know, occasionally. But I would always circle back around to be to beans and peas in particular because they just they made me I don't know they satisfied me more and they kept me fuller you know things like that. So I want to give you an example of how that works. So option one, chicken noodle soup. I love chicken noodle soup. I could eat it a lot, especially now that it's getting cold outside. Um, I love it, but I'm hungry again pretty quickly. So even if I eat an entire can of chicken noodle soup, or if I make, you know, I rarely make homemade chicken noodle soup just because it's so cheap and you can, the best chicken noodle soup is at Aldi. But anyway, um, but I'm hungry again pretty quickly. Um, and, and when I have chicken noodle soup, I find myself craving like some crusty bread or a sandwich to go with it or, um, you know, or some oyster crackers or something to kind of bulk it up. Option two, similar, is something like white bean chicken chili. Um, so that fills me up. White bean chicken chili fills me up. I mean, really fills me up. I mean, I can be satisfied with just the food, with just the soup. It is that, it's that filling. So um, the difference, both of them have chicken. Both of them have some kind of broth. One has pasta, one, the other one has beans. So that's no biggie, right? It's, you know, it's no big deal. Okay. Oh, wait. And Debbie says the best way to thicken up soup is to use refried beans. Never thought about that. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to check that. Okay. That sounds like a great idea. So here's the big difference. Um, so both of them have chicken, both of them have broth. One has pasta, one has beans, but the, here's the bigger difference. A half a cup of pasta, so if you have a half a cup of pasta in your soup versus a half a cup of, let's say, black beans, if you did the, you know, chicken chili or something like that, a half a cup of pasta has 86 calories. A half a cup of black beans has 114 calories. Okay, so, you know, a few more calories for the black beans. A half a cup of pasta, this is just regular pasta, has 18 and a half carbs. A half a cup of black beans has 20 carbs. Okay, so a tiny bit more carbs. A half a cup of pasta has 0.38 grams of fat. A half of a cup of black beans has 0.5 grams of fat, so a minuscule amount more of fat. But a half a cup of pasta has four grams of protein, and a half a cup of black beans has eight. Eight grams of protein, that's a lot of protein. A half a cup of pasta has zero grams of fiber, none. Zero grams of fiber. And a, and a half a cup of black beans has eight grams of fiber. So no wonder that a cup of chicken noodle soup, while delicious, and I eat it often, and again, the chicken noodle soup at Aldi, and I wish I had brought a can with me to show you, but it's the best chicken noodle soup I've ever had. Um, it's delicious, and I do eat it frequently, but it just needs something else. So I always feel like I need, I always feel like I need to add, you know, again, crusty bread, you know, some kind of, ciabatta bread, you know, or something like that, or eat a sandwich with it or something else because it's just not quite enough, you know, to fill me up. Um, but if I ate something like white bean chicken chili, taco soup, you know, some, something, some kind of soup that has beans in it, eight grams of protein and eight grams of fiber, that's quite a bit, you know, that's quite a bit of protein and fiber. No wonder I get filled up. So if you ask me, the four extra grams of protein and that total of eight grams of fiber may have something to do with my tummy's fullness factor. I definitely think that it does. So beans also um, are a great source of plant-based protein. My mother was vegan and she, um, yeah, I know Alicia, I thought about doing that too, adding the beans to the chicken soup. Um, but my mother was, she was vegan and that was really my main concern when she became vegan was how on earth was she going to get enough protein? Um, well, she used beans. I mean, she ate beans every single day. So she found some way to eat them every single day. They might just be beans. She might have made, um, like a bean, like a black bean burger, something like that. But she incorporated some kind of beans in her meals, you know, every day, not every meal, but every day. And she found that beans are a, that she found that beans were a great source of plant-based protein, and I think the vegetarians and vegans out there would agree with me that it is a great source of plant of plant-based 
protein. Okay, they also provide, a let's see, a fifth to a third of your daily recommended fiber. So if you're worried about getting enough fiber, if you're having to take something, you know, a supplement like Metamucil or Miralax or something like that, you know, just adding some beans to your diet and then drinking plenty of water. You can't just add beans and not drink water. You have to add the beans, peas, lentils, something like that. Um, oh, Norma said, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sidetracking for a second because Norma's, um, t oh, her hip replacement surgery has been postponed to Friday. Okay. Sorry, Norma, but let us know how it's going. So again, y'all, with all your surgeries, calm down. So, but again, if you're going to add beans for fiber, please, please, please drink enough water because that they are a great source of fiber but you got to drink a lot of water with them. Okay, let me check the chicken real quick. 11. So we got two minutes. Somebody let me know when it has been nine minutes so that I can flip the chicken over. Um, when I looked up, you know, reasons that beans are good for you, or, you know, reasons that you should eat beans, no problem finding lots and lots and lots of reasons why beans are good for you. List after list after list after list. 10 reasons that beans are good for you. 15 reasons that beans are good for you. 100 reasons that beans are good for you. Okay, the next thing, beans are are considered a low glycemic food, so it may be ben they may be beneficial to people with diabetes. Okay, my mother was vegan, and she was diabetic. That was a double good whammy. So when I say whammy, I don't mean in a bad way. That was a double good whammy for her because she was loading up on, I it was a triple whammy, lots of fiber, lots of vegetarian protein, a vegetarian source for protein, and low glycemic value so it was not kicking her blood sugar up it was great for keeping her blood sugar down really think that beans could be beneficial you know for people that are diabetic so do we have any diabetics with this tonight do we have um deanna do you have any feedback on this so i need to know because i'm getting ready to have to turn the chicken over so i want you all to chat about this for just a second i'm going to pause on the glycemic index um factor of this. Okay. Yep. And Sandra, I knew it was getting close. Thank you, Sandra. So diabet my diabetics or people who are living with diabetics chime in here. We, I need to know how do you feel about beans being beneficial in a diabetic diet and lifestyle? So you all go ahead and chime in there while I turn this chicken over. Look how pretty. And if you all could smell this. So Dusty is here today. I did not mention Dusty earlier when I was saying, when I was you know, like reintroducing who everyone was in case you are brand new. Dusty is my dog and no, if you came and I made food for you, I would not let him sit this close to it, I promise. Um, but during the chats, I have to put him right here in a chair or he cries and would drive you all crazy. He's getting ready to go ballistic because this smells so good. Okay, so we're just turning over the chicken. So this has been in the air fryer for nine minutes so far. And it is time to turn it over and let me just check them and see how they're cooking. They are looking fantastic. So we're gonna stick these back in for the other nine minutes. Okay. And if you have a Simple Living Products air fryer, when you put it back in, it just goes ahead and starts itself again. Okay, so let's see if you all have chatted anything about, okay, Alicia, bye, time for dinner. Okay, Katie says diabetic and, oh, so Katie is diabetic and the dietitian said beans would be a good thing. Okay, kinda thought so. Okay, where are my other people who are diabetic or living with someone who is diabetic? Um, let's see, Sandra is from Texas, so she grew up having red beans and cornbread several times a week in a single parent household. Yeah, I didn't even write down, I did not even write down um, budget friendly. That did, I didn't even think to put that on my list, but beans are so, so stinking budget friendly. You can start from dry, even canned beans, usually you can get them on a really good sale. Um, okay, so we already talked about, before I turned the chicken over, we talked about the fact that beans are a great source of plant-based protein. They provide a fifth to a third of your daily recommended fiber. Oh, wait, hold on. Anita's having a baked potato topped with beans, pulled pork, scallions, reduced fat cheese, and light sour cream. I will be right over. I am headed that way. Um, we talked about the fact that beans are considered a low glycemic food, which may be beneficial to people with diabetes. Also, beans are high in folate. Um, a bean 
if you just consumed a serving of beans every day, that would account for a third of your daily recommended intake of that nutrient. And that is a nutrient that is required to make healthy tissue and red blood cells. And I don't know if you know this or not, but if you're pregnant, folate is extremely important if you're pregnant. So beans, 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 if you happen to be pregnant or thinking about becoming pregnant. And then according to eating well, pinto beans in particular are high in camphorol, and I'm sure I did not just pronounce that correctly, but camphorol, which has properties that may effectively reduce inflammation. I know a lot of y'all that have infl inflammation, and it can protect cells against free radicals, which may reduce the risk of cancer and neurological diseases like Alzheimer's. So John's mother has um, Lewy body dementia. I read that today for eating well. Guess what John's going to start eating almost every day? Beans. So congratulations, John. You get to start eating beans every day. Okay. Ooh, and Joanna made a chicken enchilada casserole recipe from the app and added beans for good measure. Good girl. Okay. So here are my three favorite ways um, to enjoy beans. So beans, pinto beans. I can eat pinto beans almost every single day. My favorite way to eat pinto beans, and I just, I met a couple from Washington State yesterday. They were here in the Casey Kitchen Center showroom, and they've been here for about a year trying to build a house, and I asked them if they had been to Cracker Barrel yet, and they said, oh no, and I said, how have you been here a year and you have not been to Cracker Barrel? So I told them, when you go, you have to at least one time try beans. Now, Cracker Barrel, it's going to be pinto beans. These ha this happens to be a can of navy beans for something that we're making here in a second. But I said, you have to try, you have to at least one time. You will not be truly Southern unless you make pinto, unless you get pinto beans and put chow chow in. So this is not chow chow from Cracker Barrel. This is chow chow that one of our vendors here um, at Casey Kitchen Center sells and it is delicious as well. Chow chow is just a, a mix of cabbage, water, sugar, onions, vinegar. Excuse me, it's not without points, but it's not very many points. This is my number one, hands down, number one favorite way to eat beans is literally just a can of pinto beans with some chow chow. So easy, so filling absolutely love it absolutely love it um beans and chow chow i highly recommend it shouldn't be hard for you to find chow chow either i mean if you live near a cracker barrel they have it um or if you live near an amish market you know they should have some version of that to be honest I, because people are like oh why don't you make your own chow chow and my grandmother used to that's a lot of trouble yeah i'll just buy a jar of chow chow okay that's my very favorite way to eat it love it love it love it love it love it Okay, a simple dump and eat soup. So heat and eat soup, like um, I've got a succotash bean soup recipe on if you have an egg. If you just go to if you have an egg.com and look up, if you look up beans, or if you look up soup, you're gonna notice that almost every single soup that I have posted on if you have an egg.com has beans in it. Um, some of them are so easy, like the succotash bean soup is so easy. You literally just open like three different cans of beans, rinse them off, dump them in, put your ham in, cook it, you're done. You are absolutely done. So it's just, I call it a dump soup because you just dump the ingredients in, nothing fancy, no sauteing, no, you know, nothing crazy. You just dump it, heat it, and eat it. So that one, the recipes like that, also second favorite, okay? Ooh, yeah, and Mary says beans in a salad. That's a good one too. Okay, the last one is a power bowl. So I love my little half bowls, my little Towsy half bowls. Y'all have seen me use these a million times. Oh, oh yeah, Dusty smells the chicken. So y'all can see him now, right? Yeah, seriously, if, if you were here and I was making food for you, I would not let him be this close to the table. But he can smell the chicken and he's thinking, he's thinking that it's right here. So I will not be putting the chicken right here, okay? He's like, he is all over it, okay? So y'all know I love these little half Towsy bowls, and I love even more turning them into a protein bowl. Um, one of my favorites is my um, Taco Tuesday um, Power Bowl. Th that also is already on if you have an egg.com. Um, and it's just I F Y O U H A V E A N, an egg, E G G dot com. And if you look up Taco Tuesday or if you look up Power Bowl, you're going to find that recipe. That one's a favorite. But tonight I'm making a super simple you know, family-friendly power bowl. 
um, that I promise everyone in your family will eat, everyone in your family will love. Um, this is what we're having for supper tomorrow night. I'm making it tonight for the chat, and then I'll be transporting all of this home, but um, this is what we're having for dinner tomorrow night. So the first thing, and I promise beans will be part of this, but the first part of this um, is just some air fryer corn. And the air fryer corn, you just take just regular corn on the cob, um, rinse it off, pat it off if it's fresh. Um, if it is frozen, let it thaw and kind of pet, pet, pat the ice crystals off before you do it. Um, you And this recipe is already on if you have an egg.com. So it's just some corn on the cob um, and you're gonna spritz it with a little bit of nonstick spray or some olive oil. Add some Bragg Nutritional or whatever brand of nutritional yeast you like, add that to it and then add the seasonings of your choice. So this is, since corn is now zero points again, this is a zero point addition to our Power Bowl. So I'm gonna put my corn right there. So I've already added my air fryer corn to my Power Bowl. The next thing that I'm gonna add to the Power Bowl is an apple. So um, when you see what kind of, yes, uh, Marlene, corn is zero points now as long as you're not diabetic. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to add is an air fryer apple. Again, that recipe is already, well, the corn, let me tell you, the corn is, once you get, once you get that set in the air fryer, it's 300 on 380 degrees for eight minutes. Super easy to make. So delicious. It's absolutely the best way to eat corn on the cob if you can't grill. Um, second thing. is an air fryer baked apple since I was here at work and I needed to be able to make multiple things quickly. And we do have, whoops, wrong way. And we do have two air fryers. I've had them both going at the same time. The next thing is just an air fryer baked apple. So here is an air fryer baked apple. I went ahead and sliced this one in half. It's literally just an apple, a little bit of nonstick spray or what, you know, whatever your favorite kind of spray is. Um, a little bit of um, your favorite sweetener. I used um, Truvia baking blend on these. A little bit of cinnamon if you want it. Put a little bit of water in the bottom of whatever kind of pan you're putting it in. You don't have to cut the apples in half. You can just core them and put them in there. Um, but those are gonna be cooked on 260 for 20 minutes and they literally bake themselves. The air fryer baked apples, sometimes I'll do those in the morning just because these can be cooking the chicken's almost ready. Just because those can be cooking, and that'll, that'll uh, cool down here in just a second, but the apples can be cooking while I'm in the shower. And the nice thing about doing that in an air fryer is when it's done, just like it's doing right now. So if I, if this was the apples and if I was in the shower, so this has cycled off and it is going to cool itself down. So um, even if you forget about them, um, you're not going to get out of the shower or come home to a burned down kitchen, okay? That's another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing um, about using an air fryer. Okay, so we have air fryer corn, zero points. We have an air fryer apple, also zero points. Then I'm going to get some of the chicken. Now this chicken is thighs. So this is that, T-H-A-T, -T, not fat, not F-A-T that t-h-a-t man's chicken again that recipe is on if you have an egg.com and if you just search that man you're going to find the thigh version the breast version the um t the breast tenderloin version the pork chop version the turkey tenderloin version i think that's how many versions we have but it was so for this one the thighs thighs are points so they're not zero points okay they're about yes thank you debbie that that th that man's chicken um the thighs are not zero points but they are john's absolute favorite and since we're having all of this for supper tomorrow night i thought i would please him and do the um thighs but the thighs are between three and four points per thigh depending on how big they are absolutely the juiciest chicken you will ever eat i promise if you make it you will not go back to any other kind of chicken you won't need fried chicken ever again um once you've done it in the air fryer so let's get some of that out Oh, so good. So, so, so good. Okay, so here is a nice one, nicely seasoned. Oh, these look so good. So, so good. And the nutritional yeast, 
just helps to kind of, you know, kind of crisp that up so that it is, um, so it's more like fried chicken um, when you get it out of the air fryer, but these are so stinking juicy. It's not even funny. I mean, like so juicy. Can y'all, can y'all see how juicy this is? So I'm going to put, oh, uh oh, carefully, I'm going to carefully put one of these in my power bowl. Actually, I'm going to put a second little one in the power bowl. Oh, just because they are so yummy. So now we've got zero point chicken. I'm not sorry, chicken, zero point corn, zero point fried apple, a little bit of, um, yeah, and Debbie's exactly right. You can use that same theory and do pork chops, totally. So we have a zero point corn. We have a zero point apple. We've got with this much, probably five to six points of that men's chicken. And then to that, I'm gonna add, these are just navy beans. So it is the same beans that I just showed you a second ago in a can. I think navy beans are the best barbecue beans. Literally just took a can of just navy beans, put it in a pan. I heated them up in the air fryer. You can totally do it on top of the stove, however you like to make your you know, kind of barbecue-y beans, and then use some G. Hughes sugar-free, and this is one point per tablespoon, so this whole thing has two tablespoons in there. This is theoretically four servings, so this is going to be about a point worth of beans that I'm going to put in here, but remember, this half a cup of beans is going to have, this half of a cup of beans is going to have eight grams of fiber, and eight, oh, this smells so good, sorry. Mm. Um, eight grams of fiber and eight grams of protein um, for just the beans. This is a power bowl. So now we've got beans. So now we've kind of got cowboy beans, corn, apples, chicken. And because I've saved so many points, so this is zero, zero, about five or six, one so now i've only got i still only have maybe six or seven points in this entire power bowl if you wanted to and this is Alyssa's, this is not mine but if you wanted to you could even add a biscuit from cracker barrel if you if you so you know felt so inclined so we'll just tuck that in here and when Alyssa eats with us tomorrow night she can have the one with the biscuit in it you certainly do not have to add a six point biscuit from cracker barrel to your meal but I just thought it would sp spruce up the plate. So that is a power bowl. I hope that y'all will find a way to incorporate beans into your meals this week. They're a great source, again, of vegetable, of um, plant-based protein, high in fiber, high in protein, um, delicious, really, really, really gonna fill you up. Um, so, okay. Hope y'all enjoyed that. All of these recipes, except for the beans, um, are already on if you have an egg.com, and the, the beans are literally just a can of beans, and a couple of tablespoons of your favorite barbecue sauce. So no need for a recipe on that one. But I hope you all enjoyed. I hope John is ready for dinner for tomorrow night. I hope I can keep it away from him until tomorrow night. Um, I hope I can keep this away from Dusty because he is down here licking his chops. But you all have a great week. I will see you next week for chat number 300. Okay, chat number 300. Um, I'll try to come up with some kind of a game, um, but you all have a great week and I will see you next time. Good night.